to everyone. Welcome to our new Don Conversations. My name is Pegani Sikosana. With me, I have a lovely guest, Pastor Ntlan. Welcome, sir. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, we'll be discussing briefly with something that regards kingdom matters. Um, I'm, I'm very touched because we are building a kingdom right so we we need to understand the type of a kingdom we are trying to build we we understand also that a kingdom is ruled and run by laws there are values to it there are a lot of things involved that makes that kingdom that kingdom so today we are going to be speaking uh, a little bit and uh, the pastor will be sharing with us some of the keys of the kingdom and uh, I believe we are looking at the difference between uh, possession and inheritance. and inheritance that's right so understanding the dynamics of that kingdom will do much especially to the kingdom that we are trying to build yes. Fundis. thank you Fundis. thank, thank you, you so sir. much um, greetings everyone what a topic today we want us to look at um, the difference between inheritance and uh, possession. Amen. You know, we normally talk about Abraham's blessings. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's one <laughs> thing. Very familiar subject. A very <laughs> familiar subject. Yeah, that's true. That's it's one thing to code them. It's one yeah. thing to know them. But it's one thing to possess them. So to today, walk to walk in it. <laughs> so today I want that's us true. to just, just dissect and just go through the processes and find out how do we possess them, how do Amen. we claim them, because they need to Amen. be claimed. Now, perhaps before we even start, um, it's, it, for me it's very interesting to look at the background, how did this um, blessing came about. Mm. It was never a man's idea, mm. it was God's idea. If you look at a, a dispensation, I, I want to rather talk about dispensation, because there was a dispensation before Abraham's dispensation. <laughs> that dispensation, it, 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 it's a dispensation of, of Noah. Mm. You know how it came, uh, how, how, how God had to end it. Um, when you look at Genesis chapter 1, chapter 11, verse 4, about the issue of the Bible, mm. the Tower of the Bible. Mm. The Bible says these people, they, they grouped themselves mm. and they wanted to build themselves up a city and the tower. the tower. So that city represented the, the economic hub. Mm. And the tower to heaven, it represented the religion. <laughs> they wanted to go to God. They wanted to have their way to go to God. And they wanted to bless themselves. Mm. Oh, and because this. This, they said, let us build a city yeah. so that they would be self-sustainable. God is not part of it. Part of so it. Sure. God sure. made it a point to say, look, when I created earth, I had a plan, mm. not a man. The Bible says he confounded them. Amen. He abased them. Because whatever they were trying to do, it was to lift themselves up. <laughs> it is so interesting how he destroyed and confused them. Mm. And immediately after that, he then called a man. Mm. As if he was saying, look, this is not how you do things. Mm. Because these people, they want to bless themselves. They want to go to God. They want to do things on their own to be self-sufficient. Mm. God confounded them. How he confused them through the, um, giving them different languages. Language. They could not even hear each other. <laughs> Immediately after that, he then called a the man. Mm. Now he's saying to this man, now, I am the only entity that exalt men, mm. that bless men. That, that's how we came to Amen. know the sevenfold blessing. Amen. He then said, I will make you a great nation. Mm. I will bless you. I will make you a name great. You will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. Amen. I will curse those who curse you. In you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Mm. So God made it, a clear, made, made, made it clear to say, I am the one who is responsible to bless men. Mm. I am the one who is responsible to exalt men. That's the background of Abraham's blessings. blessings. If you can understand that background, then you'll, it will be easy to possess them. Amen. It was God's idea. Hallelujah. Now, let's, let's read Galatians chapter 3, 13, 14. Amen. Now, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Curse is everyone who hangs on a tree, 
that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, <laughs> that you might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Okay. Oh. So we cannot debate that. Um, the Bible is very clear. Those blessings belong to us. Hmm. All the blessing of Abraham belongs to us. But that's not the issue. Are we walking in them? Mm. Do we see them manifesting in our lives? Because mm. it's one thing to call them, I am the head, I'm not a tail. Mm. But when you, look, when you observe your life, there's nothing that says that you are a head. Amen. And that pains us. That pains me. Mm. So that's why today uh, we want us to look at the difference between position and inheritance. inheritance. Now, this is how I, I define inheritance is that which is given by promise to one's hair. Oh. It is that over which one has a legal right. Yeah. And then <laughs> the de definition of possession is that part which is actually claimed or appropriated. <laughs> you see the difference? That's a beast. Inheritance, yes. you have a legal right. Amen. It has been promised, but yeah. it has not been claimed. Yeah. But possession, now it has it's been appropriated. Mm. It has been claimed. It's yours now. Yeah. So in short, it's a manifestation of that which was promised. Yes. Mm. I'm listening, sir. Yeah. Wait, now, <laughs> when, you, when you read Joshua chapter 21, 43 verse 45, I want us to look at Israel now, because God promised them this when he took them out of Egypt. He promised them Canaan. But that promise did not just come. Mm. And many of them did not even see that promise come to fruition. Amen. Only few possess the land. Now, <laughs> so the Lord gave to Israel all the land of which he had sown to give to their fathers, and they took possession of it and dwell in it. Mm. The land was given, the promise was, but they had to take position. Mm. They took position and dwell in it. Yeah. The Lord gave them the rest all around according to all that he had sown to their fathers. And not a man of all their enemies stood against them. The Lord delivered them, delivered all their enemies into their land. Not a word failed to fail of any good things which the Lord had spoken to the house of Israel. Amen. All came to pass. Now, the, the key here, they took possession of what God has given them. Mm. I can give you, say, here's, here, here's, here's a phone, here's something. The, as a giver, I would have done my part. Yes, something. But as a receiver, you've got to receive it. Mm. It's yes. one thing to say, um, someone gives you something and you claim, us, ah, this man has given me something. Mm. But have you received it? Is it in your position? Yeah. Because yes. most Christians, they, they know all the verses that talks about the promises. I call them inheritance. Amen. They are inheritance because you have not yet possessed them. Possessed. Mm. Up until such time you possess them, they become yours. To call them and know them, it's not going to help you. <laughs> There's a pastor that really blesses me. He normally says, do you know, if you are hungry, you need to take food for you to be full. Yeah. You can be hungry and see food next to you and keep talking about the food and mm. say, this food has got this particular vitamin. <gasps> as long as you are not taking it and eating it, you will die talking about it. Mm. Because the food has to, <coughs> you see? You have to consume. You have to consume. There must be an action and you consume it. But talking about the food and you are hungry, mm. saying here's the food, knowing the food, is not going to help you. That's what we are doing currently. Mm. We're talking about the blessings, but we're not possessing them. Oh, Fundis. Yeah. No. Um, I'm, I'm just thinking, Mem Fundis, we, 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 we are a body of believers, right? Yes. And we, we, we know this promise. As, and God knows we know the promises. Yeah. We, we go to him, we remind him every day of these promises. So what is it that's making us fail to attain these promises? Because I'm thinking, as, 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 as I come to you and I promise you to give you the car, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I'm telling you that you need to come and take the documents and everything, the car is not really yours unless you come and take the documents that proves that this car belongs yeah, to you, see. you see. Mm -hmm. So th this is the issue I think we are having as the body of believers, the fact that we, we know we have these things, yes. we have this blessing, mm -hmm. but uh, why is it not manifesting? Is, is, is it a lack 
of, of an action or a lack of knowledge. Um, I think maybe if we can try to understand better on those issues just before you can proceed, maybe trying to explain that part. What is it that we are doing wrong as the body of believers that we are failing to attain this thing? What, what, what steps can we take? I, I assume you're still going to get into that. Yeah. But just to highlight that part, that in, in, in which part are we doing wrong as the body of believers? I think you've just mentioned it, both knowledge and action. Mm. So um, the kingdom that you are operating on is predicated upon knowledge. Mm. When you lack knowledge, the, the word of God says, my people are dying because okay. of lack knowledge. That's true, and that's true. beyond knowledge, now there's an act, which is now you need <laughs> to receive, mm. which is faith. Most of us don't know how mm. to receive. Because if you don't have hands, and I'm trying to give you something, the only hands we have is faith. That's true. You might That's want true. the thing, but if you don't know, you don't have the hands to, to receive it. And it's, I don't run ahead of myself. We'll get into details and talk <laughs> about that. Yes. I now, no problem. also, what is very important that you to understand this God, pro these promises that we have been given, there is an enemy that is fighting us mm. to receive them. <laughs> it's not just going to be easy. There's an enemy that is going against what God has said. He's fighting us. He's fighting this. Now, when you read Exodus 13, 17, I want you to, to, to just to take a look at this. Exodus 13, verse 17. Amen. Then it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistine. Although that was near, for God said, lest perhaps the people change their mind when they see war and mm. return to Egypt. So, you, do you know, Guti, um, it would have taken them maybe a day for them to get into the promised land. Mm. But God knew that is an enemy was going to fight them. Mm. And the strongest enemy was the Philistines. Mm. And God knew they were not ready to fight the enemy at that time. So hence he had to take an a, 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 a different route. So, so what, what, what am I trying to say? There's an enemy that is fighting you to receive this. Mm. That you need to fight. So you're not going to receive them so easily. There's an <laughs> enemy that is fighting you to receive them. And God, knowing that they were not ready to fight Palestine, Philistine, mm. he, he, he made sure that they took the longest road. In, and the reason why longest road, mm. they needed to know their God. <laughs> because you don't to uh, enjoy the blessings without knowing without the blesser. Knowing. Because this is another thing in Fundi, isn't Yes. It? He could have just taken them out. But the thing is, for, 40, for, for, for many years, I think about 400 years, they stayed in Egypt. They didn't know yes. the God that, that has to take them out. Yes. They've only heard about him. Yes. So in the process, God is wise, you know. Mm. God is wise beyond measure. So in the process of him taking them out, he still has to educate them about himself yes. so that they know he has to take them through a series of events. They have to, first of all, Pharaoh has to to resist releasing them yes. so that the, the people of Israel will know the God who took them out. That's true. They have to face the Red Sea so that they know the God who paves the way. They have to go through Mount Sinai yeah. and they have to see the God who descends in the cloud yeah. and his glory is so amazing that nothing can come closer to the mountain where he descended. You know, yeah. He has to educate them, take them through a series of events so that they know exactly. I love that, sir. Yes. The key is to know the place because if you don't know the blessing, you will worship the blessing. Mm. Even though God had opted for a longest route, they still didn't know the blessing. The exactly. very same blessing, remember when they came out of Egypt, they came up with gold. <laughs> what did yeah. they do with that gold? They, they made the calf. Ah. So if we have not known the blessing, the you blessing will, will become a curse. A curse. Mm. You will end it will become your mammon. Mm. You will worship your the blessings. So <laughs> hence most people they are worshiping Amen. it. Now Amen. let's read Joshua eighteen Amen. verse eight, uh, verse one. Now the whole congregation of the children of Israel assembled together at Shiloh and set up a tabernacle of meeting there, and the land was subdued before them. But there remained among the children of Israel seven tribes which had not yet received their inheritance. Listen to Joshua asking them. Then Joshua said to the children of Israel, How long will you neglect to go and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers has given you? Amen. Again, 
there remain a tribe among them mm. who knew about the inheritance, <clears throat> but they did nothing about it. Amen. Now Joshua is asking them, how long will you neglect to go? <laughs> so in other words, when we don't possess our thing, there's a negligence from our part. In our part. And then we are blaming God. It has got nothing to do with God. God has already given these blessings. They belong to us, but they need to be possessed. Mm. For how long will you neglect? Possess the land which the Lord... The land has already been given. It's yours. Abraham's blessing has already been given are ours. Mm. But have you possessed them? Oh. So that's why Joshua is asking them, how long? It's negligence. It's lack of knowledge. Amen. Amen. They need to be possessed. <laughs> now, if you want to understand how these blessings are really possessed, you, you would want to study the book of Joshua. Amen. I call it the book of, um, uh, what do you call Conquest. Because Victory. there must be victory, there must be conquest. Something needs to happen to possess. Mm. So there are a few things I want us to look at. How Amen. did Joshua possess the land? Amen. And that will assist us. Because some of the things, as much as they're in Old Testament, <coughs> we can try and bring them into New Testament and understand them. Amen. Now, first thing they did, they had to possess their inheritance in proper relation to the Lord. Amen. That's the first thing. To the Lord. They had to, yes, had to mm. proper relationship to the Lord. Without the relationship, you <laughs> cannot possess them. Remember, the, in the background, we said, it's God who said, I will mm. bless you. I will lift you. I will make your name. Mm. If you try and lift yourself, God will humble, yourself, humble mm. you. Now, there are three things, again, that they had to do for them to possess. The first thing, there was a, a celebration of a Passover. Mm. And secondly, there was a circumcision of a new generation. Mm. And thirdly, the ark of the Lord was there, was present, leading the way. Leading the way. Which is very key. Those three things are very, key. very key. Without them, it becomes difficult, like, like you were asking, how mm. do you then possess them? Can you just willy-nilly just possess them? Mm. They had to be in a good relationship with the Lord. Now, I'm not going to go straight. Now, when you, when you, the, the celebration of Passover... We, we all know the origin, the original of Passover. It was a memorial for them of God passing over their houses mm. when, they, when they killed the firstborn and, and, and the peace in Egypt. Mm. They had to apply the blood in their door. So what it means, the qualification for receiving this in, 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 in our dispensation is the blood of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Salvation. It's salvation. Mm. They belong. Remember, these blessings are for those who belong to Abraham, are, are those of faith. Mm. And for us to enter the kingdom is through the blood of Jesus. So that one is very key. So sinners and those who are outside, that's why Jesus at some point you call someone a dog. He said these benefits are for the children. Not the dog are for outsiders. So that's the first thing they had to be in relationship with the Lord. And secondly, the circumcision of a new generation. Circumcision in our, in, in, in our case it also means salvation, circumcision of the heart. Mm. Our heart should be fully circumcised. Mm. Our mind fully transformed. You know, most of them, they died in the wilderness because as much as God took them out of Egypt, but their mind was still in Egypt. Mm. They were not fully circumcised and their mind was not fully mm. renewed. Your mind can reject God's blessings. <laughs> Amen. They all died in the wilderness. Because they didn't want to change. They came up with Egypt. Mm. So that's one of the things. There are people who got, get offended when talk about blessings. They believe in suffering. They, re, they truly get offended. <laughs> Don't talk about prosperity. <laughs> they truly get offended. It's a sign their mind is not fully renewed. And that which you, you dishonor, you repel. Mm. Those are other issues why people are not walking in these blessings. We don't yeah. see them manifesting. If you don't believe, you won't act. Mm. That's, true. That's true. And the third one, which is very key, the Ark of the Covenant, that's, you can, that's Joshua 11, was leading the way. God's presence was there. You cannot possess them without God being there. Mm. When he is there, 
I want us to, to just to show you what the presence of, of the Lord does. If you read Second Samuel chapter 6, um, I'll read from verse 9. David was afraid of the Lord that day, and he said, How can the ark of the Lord come to me? So David would not move the ark of the Lord with him into the city of David. Mm. But David took it aside into the house of Obed Edom the, the Jittite. The ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed the Edom the Jittite three months. And the Lord blessed Obed Edom and all his household. Now it was told King David, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obed Edom and all that belongs to him because of the ark of, the, of, of, of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed to the city of David <laughs> with gladness. Now, initially, David is afraid to accept or to welcome the ark. He's afraid to welcome the presence of the Lord because of what, what happens before. There's a guy who tried to assist the Lord and he was struck, he died immediately. Yeah, so that true. fear, David did not understand what the ark of the Lord, what the presence of, of the Lord does. Mm. He said because of that, he was afraid, he refused. He mm. gave the gentleman and the mm. gentleman, he didn't understand as well. He took it. The Bible says just for three months, the ark in his house, he was so blessed. Three months was enough. Three months was enough. <laughs> such that David heard about it. Mm. And he said, no, 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 no. I want the ark back. Mm. The Bible says he went and took out the, 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 the ark. So another thing, remember, this is God who's placing us. Amen. The presence of the Lord is key. Mm. You need to walk with the Spirit. Because the, the ark was leading the way. He was directing them to say, do this, do this, do this. Without him directing us, they saw it is difficult. When we read Proverbs 10 to 22, it says the blessing of the Lord enriches and he add no sorrow, no to, sorrow it. to it. When he blesses, when he's leading, there is no sorrow to it. But when you bless yourself, mm. when the present is not there, there is toiling. Mm. People get sick. Depression. How can the blessing of the Lord depresses you? Mm. There's something wrong with it. It's either you are lead, leading yourself, mm. you are blessing yourself. But when he's blessing you, when he's involved, when he's leading you, there is no sorrow to it. There's no sorrow to it. There's yeah. no sorrow to it. That's true. That's true. Now, mm. the second one, that's very key. They had to possess their inheritance in proper relationship to each other. The Bible says they came out harnessed by ranks of five in battle array with everyone in their place. Now, unity. Oneness. Oneness. Now, you know, you know one thing about unity, where w initially when I talk about Genesis 11, about those guys who wanted yeah. to build a tower. A tower. Now, <laughs> this was sinful unity. So, there's power in unity. Mm. Now, w the normal verse that you normally read, Psalms 133 from verse 1. A song of us and of David. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to, to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head running down on the beard, the beard of, of Aaron running down on the edge of his garment. It is like the, the Jew of Hermon descending upon the mountain of Zion, for the Lord commanded blessing. Where there is unity, there is blessings. In a church, if there's unity, there's blessing. Mm. Where there's division, there's no blessings. Mm. One of the ways we attract this blessing is unity. Amen. It's unity. Amen. Now, the greatest gift that the Holy Spirit God has ever gave us is the Holy Spirit. You read Acts chapter 2 from verse 1. Amen. Little when the day of Pentecost, Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one accord, in one place place. Mm. They, remember, Holy Spirit is one of the places, one of the gifts from God. How did they receive it? They were in one place, mm. one mind, one accord, one and he, one heart. That's key in receiving the blessings. <laughs> and he came, and, he, and suddenly there came sound from heaven. Amen. When there's unity, there's power. When there's unity, there's blessings. So, this oh. is very key. Unity. Unity. We need to fight for unity as a church. We need to do away with anything that divides us. Because when there's a unity, the blessing of the Lord 
mm. will be upon that particular church. Uh, I, I also think, in fundis, we, we are failing to understand as a body of believers that we are a unit. Mm. You know, if, if a body fights amongst itself, it, 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 it becomes dysfunctional. That's true. You know, the, the head wants to be the, the legs, the arms want to be the eyes. Yes. You know, we, we, we are fighting amongst themselves. There's no settlement within ourselves. Yes. And in that trajectory, we are also expecting the blessings of God to flow. I think another misconception we are ought to fix, whenever you say blessing, people assume immediately it's, it's materialistic. You, you can be blessed and not, and not show forth anything materialistic. It's the blessing that leads to materials. Sure. It's different for unbelievers. They, they can have materials, but the difference is that the, that, that, ble that, that material gain yes. sometimes will add sorrow. Mm. But the difference with the blessing is that it does not add sorrow in it. So another misconception with Christians is that they... They go when they do things, they attain those material gains, and they come and they say, the Lord has blessed me. And, and, and when the frustration comes after those actions, and then they blame God, and they forget that I, I, I had to do something to attain this, and I oh, went yes. to God and I called it a blessing. Oh, yes. As for it was not a blessing. Sure. I think if we can also try to make that clarity, because... The greatest example. I'm, I'm, I'm not preaching for suffering. <laughs> I just wanted to be clear. The issue in uh, Jesus that makes, makes a story about um, the, the rich man and Lazarus. Yeah. The, the difference between the two, the rich man had possessions. The rich man had materialistic possessions that were outside of God's blessing. But Lazarus had the blessing of God. That is why when he dies, he is taken up by angels. And he, he goes and he stays in Abraham's bosom. Now, the difference between the two is that one has the blessing of God and the other has materialistic gains. We Christians need to lean more on God's blessing. And the blessing of God adds favor. If I can possess the blessing of God, it means there are certain doors that I will only knock once and they are open for me. Why? It's because I possess the blessing of the Lord. But without that blessing, I will toil and struggle and everything will become very difficult for me to do because the blessing of God is not there. I think Jabez also understood that principle. That is why he is also saying, as we are about to close, Jabez is saying and is crying to the Lord. He says, oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my oh, territory. Yes. He understands the principle of a blessing. Now, as we are about to close, we need to understand the power and the principle that governs our, our, our kingdom, the kingdom that we are in. Now, as the children of God, we need to know who we are and how we should actually go about into possessing God's, uh, God's blessing in our lives. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, bless you. <laughs>